Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another Madden 22 Ultimate Team video on the channel and today you just caught me finishing up my daily uh, but in this video we're going to be going ahead and ranking the brand new veterans cards along with their power ups earlier today I did make a video breaking down all of the new content that is out today as well as the MCS stuff talking a little bit about that so if you want to hear about that check out this video from earlier today but before we get into the rest of the video guys make sure you guys drop a like down below and to subscribe with noties on if you guys have been enjoying the vids and you do not want to miss any coming out in the future but without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it as you guys can see i finished off my veterans challenges it literally took me 10 minutes get them done because if you don't the next week you're not gonna be able to get yourself that wild card wednesday week one through four pack so make sure to get them done and you'll be able to get yourself a free player next week. Going to be super clutch. Hopefully we get some sick cards next week. I am expecting rising stars is probably what I think we're going to see. Um, so we'll have to see there. Uh, but as you guys can see, we have our veterans power of fantasy back. Like I said, today we are going to be ranking the power ups on which ones I think you guys should be taking. As well as I'm going to be ranking the actual veterans cards. But let's check out all of these. I believe all of these are new power ups. Um... So they're all going to be valued about the same, maybe Jimmy Graham a little bit more and Sammy Watkins more because they have the best veteran cards. But other than that, they're all going to have the same value pretty much. Now ranking these cards purely on a basis of who I think you guys should be selecting for the power-ups. It's always very similar to the actual veteran rankings. Coming in last, I'm going to be going with Jamie Collins. Outside linebackers, especially when they are coverage linebackers are never particularly good in this game jamie collins has some solid speed but doesn't have any pass rush ability at all we'll have to see his zone coverage but he's not a fantastic run stopper either jamie collins i'm not really sure how i feel about that card uh he just doesn't look very good from the uh, eye test and what i'm seeing maybe he'll play better than i expect him to coming in at number four we got dj swearinger um dj swearinger power ups not gonna sell for a ton fully powered up his speed just is not quite where you'd want it he's a solid run stopper might be good in the box or in like a nickel corner scenario but he's just not good enough to play deep with the speed he has dj swearinger just not a guy i recommend you take out of the power ups joe hayden coming in at number three um he's a cornerback so obviously depth guys you power him up you can keep measure cornerback four five for a little bit um definitely uh, for the next couple months uh but eventually obviously you're gonna have to upgrade him or you could wait till he gets an upgrade but uh joe hayden solid cornerback nothing wrong with him nothing particularly great about him though just really well balanced coming in at number two we got sammy watkins low key this sammy watkins card his full powered up card is fantastic um he's got really well he's got really good speed really agile really solid after the catch he's got really really good route running stats plus catching stats well because we'll see his actual card in a minute um but even then if you don't power him fully up to his veteran card he's still really really solid he's gonna be one of the more bet well balanced receivers in the game and like i said with joe hayden depth position you can keep him as your wide receiver four or five later down the road in the year so sammy watkins is definitely really really solid option and then coming in at number one we have to save the highest overall card this is usually how it goes every week they give the best card the highest overall card we got jimmy graham jimmy graham just looks fantastic he's got really really good speed he's six five fantastic red zone threat maybe not the best route runner but if you have jimmy graham as your number two behind george kittle that is an unbelievable tight end group and if you have darren waller there as well you're gonna be unstoppable you bring jimmy graham in the red zone he's literally taller than everyone on the field so he's gonna come down with so many jump balls and i believe he has like 91 spec catch 92 powered up Jimmy Graham, unbelievable, one of the best tight ends in the game, and uh, his power-up is definitely not a bad option, like I said, even if you don't want to power him up all the way, he's going to have really solid speed, he's still going to be super tall, Jimmy Graham looking fantastic, personally, I think I'm going to go, it's with Joe Hayden or Jamie Collins, just because I don't have any interest in picking up Sammy Watkins or Jimmy Graham, and I'm probably eventually going to need these power-ups for the Browns theme team, so I think I'm going to go with joe hayden because that's who i want most i definitely want to pick up joe hayden um so he's gonna be added uh eventually we'll power him up and all that kind of stuff when i get the chance when i get more time to focus on the browns theme team 
Uh, but yeah, that was my little ranking of the power-ups. I don't like to spend too much time on the power-ups in these videos. Now let's go ahead and go talk about the actual veterans cards, the cards that actually matter. Obviously, the power-ups, you can just power them up or get them right before the power-up, but they're not super important. They're just an easy way to get some free cards if you uh, want to sell, make some coins, or get yourself some of these powered-up veterans. But let's go ahead and check out these prices. They have gone down a little bit from the video earlier today. Jamie Collins definitely seems like the cheapest, and that makes sense. I'm going to have him at number five. Five, same as the power-ups he's just not very good 85 speed not good enough 85 blocks well 85 speed solid actually i shouldn't have said that 85 block shit is all right 83 tackle not quite what i want to see 63 solid height for a linebacker 88 impact block is pretty good 89 hit power but only a, only a 74 zone jesus this card is terrible yeah, no. The only way this card is usable out on the field is if you're using him because he cannot pass rush. He cannot hold him in coverage on his own, even against a tight end. So you have to use this card for him to be able to be on the field. And he's just not going to be fast enough. 85 speed is solid, but his body size is going to slow him down. And he's not going to be as agile as a safety. So Jamie Collins, this card is way worse than I thought it was going to be. Pretty much useless. I don't see a use for that Jamie Collins card. Sucks because he fits on the Browns theme team. I'll have to be picking him up. Uh, but they're coming in at number four. Once again, similar to the power ups list, we got DJ Swearinger coming in here, and he's nowhere near a bad card. 86 speed does hurt a little bit, but like I said, him in the box, pretty solid. Um, maybe even in a nickel corner scenario, he is a little bit short, but he is a safety, so he's gonna be a lot more athletic. Plus, that 89 hit power and 87 zone coverage means you could put him in the box and you don't have to use him. He's gonna stop the run really well, he's gonna hold up in coverage against tight ends, receivers, running backs, stuff like that. 85 jumping, 80 impact blocking as well, 78 press. He can definitely play that nickel corner spot. So, if you want this DJ Swearinger card, he's genuinely a lot better than I thought he was going to be. If you want this card, definitely don't play him deep, but he's going to be fantastic in the box or a nickel nickel corner. Um, DJ Swearinger is really, really solid. Uh, but I'm, I still got Joe Hayden coming in at number three just because he is a cornerback. Cornerbacks, obviously, a lot of depth. He's also really, really solid. Powered up. He's got 88 speed, 89 man, 87 zone. Really well balanced coverages as well as solid enough speed. Not a, not like great speed, but solid enough to where he's still definitely usable. You can power him up and you can throw team chems on him. If you run a Steelers or Browns theme team, you can get that uh, the speed up. Or if you have really, really good... Uh, what they're called chems uh you can also get that up but 77 hit power is actually really really solid for a corner so joe hayden one of the better run stopping corners it looks like but he's also fantastic coverage wise solid enough speed wise and uh joe hayden just a really solid corner nothing particularly special about him i'm not taking him over certain guys but uh if you get him for free like if that uh fantasy pack is only like a one out of one out of four option of one random from each week and you get joe hayden definitely not the worst option um but coming in at number two we got sammy watkins receiver like i said earlier extremely balanced and that's what we got a lot of this week joe hayden a very balanced cornerback who's really really good at almost everything sammy watkins really only lacks in the short route run he's got solid height really solid speed pretty damn good route running with that 89 deep route run incredible catching stats um he's really really good after the catch 89 juke 89 spin 90 ball carrier vision and he's a really solid kick returner sammy watkins is a really good receiver i feel like the only thing holding him back is that speed he's not quite as good as guys like jamar chase or uh even like uh the new Tyree kill just because he lacks in the speed department now his speed is entirely usable if you run a bills chiefs rams ravens theme team sammy watkins is a very very good receiver and if you get this card for free definitely use him power him up even if you want to because he's going to be a fantastic receiver he just doesn't quite compare to those guys with like 90 91 speed and um but he's still really really solid really really solid uh receiver card that's definitely gonna be worth his price point and then coming in at number one no surprise here we got the highest overall card jimmy graham coming in he just looks fantastic okay i thought he was 6'5 he is 6'7 260 jimmy graham is unbelievably big 87 speed on this card as well which is crazy 91 spec catch 88 catching traffic 89 catching he will come down with everything in the red zone solid route running i mean you really don't expect this jimmy graham card to run routes he's got solid enough run block for a jimmy graham card i gotta say and he's fantastic after the catch 86 juke 84 spin 89 stiff arm 88 ball carrier vision 87 truck fantastic after the catch surprisingly he is unbelievably good after the catch as well as he's got an 85 deep route run so 
he's gonna be fantastic in the red zone and if you're just throwing him deep lob balls and he like breaks a tackle he's gonna be hard to take down jimmy graham looks like a really really good tight end i don't know if i'm taking him or kyle pitts obviously i'm taking waller and kittle over him but if you pick up Jimmy Graham and you have him as that third or second tight end and you bring him in in the red zone or you, when you run into two tight end sets, he's going to be really, really good. Jimmy Graham, fantastic card for sure. Definitely worth the pickup. But yeah, guys, that was my ranking of the brand new heavyweights and their power-ups. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. And if you did, make sure to drop a like down below and to subscribe when Nodi's on. But yeah, I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace out.